What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Ben Sheep Podcast. I'm George Niang. This is my co-host, Kevin Spees. And today we have, you know, the only the the Duncan Robinson. Yes, a.k.a. Sniper, a.k.a. I'll shoot from half court. Don't care. No, uh, Duncan's a really good friend uh, of mine. So friend of the pod. You know, no, he doesn't friend really know you like that. <laughs> um, friend of the program. Big fan of the program. Yeah. Of the program. No, Duncan, uh, actually, I don't know if we're allowed to say this, but he had his own podcast called the the long shot pod. I think you had two podcasts, right? You had one in in at the college level. I did. Wow, you did your research. I yeah. did my the research. Doc too. and Dunk Show. Shout out to Andrew Dockich. <laughs> uh, we were actually early in the podcast game. You, were. you guys Dockage. are now just hopping on the bandwagon a little late. We're so late. It's yeah. tough. Yeah. Hey, better late than never. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you noticed, but we have a whole two thousand listeners. I love that. So shout out to the tried and true man, the loyals. <laughs> yeah, we're in a pretty saturated market right now. But wait, we're we're grinding out here. We're pushing out content. Um, I don't know if you knew this, but you know, me and this guy have been battling each other since you know, I was like in yeah. the twelfth grade. Did you also play on Middlesex Magic? I always no, asked. no, nah, he Did was you? big time. He was BABC. Nah. Yeah, oh, no disrespect. Like big time sneaker circuit Damn. whole thing. Uh, he know. was out there getting to it. I was getting free Nikes yeah, back then. Sure they said was. they'd pay for my lunch and give me free Nikes. So I was like, ha ha. Do you want to hear, speaking of free Nikes, I just want to tell us one quick story about the type of guy you are. We we went and, go and golfed. By the way, I beat How's him. How's your game? I beat him on the back nine. Okay. No, he didn't. So I you guys, 100 you guys percent beat him on the back nine. He sucks. Well, I, I'm bad. He's worse. Okay. I I'm a with little G. bit worse. I played with G a good amount. So I'm, I'll put it this that way. That gives me a good barometer. Yeah. I sh I sh I'll shoot like a 105 pretty consistently. Okay. So I'm not very good, so but bad. I'm consistently b that bad. I, I rarely go much worse than that, but I've broken 100 like a few times. Anyway, I beat him on the back nine. He was super pissed. We get out We, <laughs> we get out to, to, the, to the car like at the end. By the way, he has a flat tire. We have to show this content. I'll send this content in. <laughs> the guy that picked up the car was crazy. Anyway, our caddy was really cool. We're cleaning out the back of the car to get the fucking uh, like spare out. Yeah. And he gives this guy like seven pairs of free kicks. He's like, hey, he goes, uh, your size? Yeah, he goes. His son did. His son. His son. son. But this guy was like, so, so to break down, the, to break down the story, yeah. we were playing at Firestone. Which is in, sick. In uh, in Ohio, yeah. like you remember a tiger shot, like that yeah. was no, no, he was on the PGA tour. I know when it, it was getting dark and he shot it in the back corner. Yep, yeah. So anyway, he learned I'm about pumped. that shot. I got, that a, day. <laughs> I got a, I parred it right, and I was like pumped because you know pars are hard to come by. You know, sure. George Bogey, Nee score. George Bogey Neing <laughs> is, um, and uh, so that happens. I'm pumped. I'm like, I got a part. I'm like, I'm telling the caddy, I'm like, hey, we're just gonna drive to my car, like drop our stuff off, like I'll, you know. You Break take you care of, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So we get to the car, and I'm like, "No!" And Kevin's like, "What?" And I'm like, "I have a flat." So whatever we Wait, do, is all, this a rental car? No, it's my car. Oh, yeah, it's rain. Got but, you, got you, got you. But the range. But the range. Like, you know, cars they have like. Kevin's like, "I got it." We take out the jack. He's like doing everything. We get all the bolts out, and then there's one that just won't turn because you got to have like the lock. Yeah. The lock nut. I haven't changed a lot of tires in my day, but I, I know what you're talking about. You can figure it out. And yeah, whatever. Yeah, we yeah, couldn't yeah, get yeah. it done, so then had to call roadside. I'm an hour away from my house. We waited wow. three hours, and this guy's videotaping me being like, like all upset because we couldn't get it done. Anyway, He's yes. Tight. But that know. range has some miles on it. That was a, a Utah pickup, wasn't it? No, no, no. I got a new one when I got paid. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Uh, uh, you like uh, that. No, but speaking of when dudes get paid, <laughs> I just want to talk to you. Or, or tell a story, and you know maybe Duncan can chime in on how this Get whole paper? New York thing started. You know, okay, when Dunk, me and Duncan lived together in L.A. while uh, you know he was going through the free agency process, and yeah. uh, you know it was a, it was a nice place. Yeah. And, uh, so after he signed his deal, I was like, "Yo, we got to celebrate! Like, come down to Cape Cod! <laughs> like, I got a setup." And he hits me back, and he was like, "Nah, I got one better for you. Forget Cape Cod. How about you try and." Try and come down to the Hamptons, and it's Much kind, of, kind of been a thing that we do. For I've never, you guys have had I'd, this Hamptons trip like for the last few years, right? Well, years I'd ago. never done the Hamptons before prior to this. Okay. Um, when I re signed in Miami, I'm not like a huge like club guy, yeah, personally. So but we were we were trying to look, uh, we don't find you at Kiki on the river. <laughs> We were trying to figure out something we could do, bring some people together, mostly yeah. people I grew up with, yeah. Um, people along the journey yeah. and uh yeah we kind of started a group chat 
we landed on the Hamptons and yeah, the did, rest is history. I can't you, believe we're talking about this on a podcast right now. This uh, is supposed to be like kind of on wraps, but Jesus. Yeah, I'm the low. Well, I get hit up, by the way, I get, oh, I, I have friends that like, cause I, I've been in New York for like a long time. So like my social circle goes out. In. I'm tapped in. You're tapped me? in. Okay. Especially in like the industry circuit. Cause I bartended. Okay, so gotcha. people hit me up when you guys are out, when you guys were out there. Mostly G oh, though. Jordan, like, no, they said G, both of you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, G's name carries a lot of weight out there. Philly guy, Northeast. <laughs> yeah. All the way. Um, Duncan, did you have a moment like where, like, is it when you put the paper to pen or what is it? Pen to paper where the deal becomes real or was it a call? Did you get a moment where you were like, oh, I just got the contract that like everybody works so hard for? Did you have like a one moment or was it a slow build? There was a cool moment where I got to have my family down to Miami to sign. Um, my agent was there whole family flew in so that was cool but like even so, even doing that like it doesn't fully kind of like come to fruition until it doesn't sink in for for some time and so obviously bank. that it, ironically that year was a very challenging year for me just yeah. like dealing with expectations my my entire career and life up to that point i was like constantly chasing chasing and feeling like i had this this massive chip on my shoulder and then it was like a switch where now all of a sudden I had this massive target on my back and I had this expectation that I had to live up to. And honestly, like there are a lot of growing pains and learning experiences with that. Um, I'm happy I went through them. And now, you know, now we're like three, four years removed from it. And I just have significantly more like perspective on, you know, just what that means to go through something like that. Yeah. And there's this public perception of what signing that and having that is and then there's also the the experience that you actually endure and they don't always sort of align and you know i'm, I'm they're life lessons man and and obviously I, i'm speaking from an incredibly privileged position so i'm not like wishing away any any sort of experience or or adversity but uh yeah you know it's there's challenges yeah i can imagine like because we've we've kind of had that conversation with a couple guests and even with you where it's like uh i don't know if like you guys feel like you shouldn't be able to talk about the adversity, but money is money and adversity is adversity. And just because you have, you've signed a contract doesn't take away the all feelings. The like it, feelings yeah, it doesn't cover hit. it all up. Yeah. And it, so I wonder if it's hard for you guys well, to the, be the, like, the crazy part is because before, like we'd have like conversations be like, yeah, this is tough and da da da. And I'd be like, yo, like you're good. Like just check your bank account. Da da da. And it wasn't until like, it happened to me where I'm like, oh, where like, I feel like this year, it's like the conversation where he, it's almost like an aha, where it's like, oh yeah, you tell me to just look at your bank account, but like, you know, you're struggling. It's like, you can't cover up yeah. the emotion of like what you go through in a sport that you once played for like the joy of it. Right. And then someone's like, yeah, but like, we want you to be this. And it's like, no, but like, I, I'm trying. Yeah. Like, yeah. This yeah. is, this is like what I am. And like, yeah. sure. Like, but at the end of the day, like money doesn't cover up how, like, I want to feel when I approach a game right. that like I play like for fun and you never really know until like you've experienced it. So like I'll dial back to when we were doing a podcast and Kevin was like, you know, if Boston wins like this championship, it will be like the easiest championship. And I was like, <laughs> Bro, shut the like shut yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Like, what do you mean? Like winning any time is, like, is is the is the hardest thing to do. He's like, no, but they didn't really have to go through anything. It's like when they are literally gonna be like, who won in 2024? They're gonna doesn't be like matter. Boston. Yeah, it's not yeah, gonna be like matter. an asterisk, but like he's a good, you know, playoff like of of ideas because he's coming from the perspective of like I have a little bit of an idea because I've been around it, sure. but also he still has friends that are like texting like, how the fuck is this dude ever getting on the court? Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. he sucks. So when he'll ask me something, I'll be like, yeah, that makes sense. But at the same time, it's like, no, that's, yeah. that's not the reality of it. We're just idiot. M m we're idiots. It's like all it's because it's like, if you're not, it seems like if you're not experiencing, it's like anything, if you're not in it, experiencing it, you could speak on it all you want. You're not going to understand. Do you ever get like frustrated, at, like sports writers and shit that say stuff and you're like, dude, you, you're fat and you like have never <laughs> Whoa, played an are we body I mean, shaming? It's, it's a tough dynamic because we're in the entertainment industry and we're beneficiaries of the industry. So like, like all of that, whether it be fans, writers, what have you, media are contributing to the business. So when we're beneficiaries of it, it's hard to just like totally be exempt from criticism. But I think it's always 
a good thing to just like acknowledge the human element and aspect of any industry and any business. Yeah, I got um, feeling. We got feelings too. For yeah. sure. We do for, for sure. sure. So I mean, that's. I think now more than ever, there's like a lot of players like with podcasts like this, honestly, where our perspectives are able to be heard. And I don't think anyone's like lining up to feel sorry for us, which I don't think they should be, mm. quite honestly. Like that's part of, I mean, this is a cutthroat business. This profession yeah. is like, you know, every year people are coming for, you know, somebody's jobs and mm. someone's got to give numbers wise. But at the same time, just having the acknowledgement that like, you know, making all this money or whatever doesn't make it really hard when you got to uproot your family and move to another city. Like there's still real That's challenges hard. or just getting crushed on whatever social media or this, yeah. that, like the narratives that get pushed. And mm -hmm. I think I would, I would imagine you feel this way, but like, this is like a skill, like anything else you get better at dealing with that stuff. And a lot of times when you're young coming in, like you don't know how to compartmentalize, you don't know how to handle that stuff. You know, I felt like I, coming in at 23, 24, I had a little bit of an advantage of like having some mental stability of like being able to put, you know, that sort of criticism or ridicule in a place where I wasn't just going to let it tear me down. But even myself, like there's still growing pains that come, you know, yeah. in that process. So through all the struggles and the trade rumors and, you know, this guy, this, this guy, that, I mean, you can put some specificity to it. No, I mean, put some shit behind it. I mean, I'm going to talk like, about it now. I, I feel it because at the end of the day, guess what? You're, Still on the same team that brought you in, and and the crazy Playing part out is that like, whole contract. But and, like, and what right? we're and what we're talking about is like you are growing and learning, <laughs> but at the same time, like a lot of people, like what what they aren't understanding is a lot of players will just be like, "This has become too much," and like, "I want out," and public and publicly be it. So like when you talk about like grasping that and learning to be better at it, like you've overcome a lot to get to this point, and you overcame it without quitting. Like, especially yeah. like, because a lot of, in this level is it, a professional business. And a lot of people be like, this isn't a good fit for me anymore. Like I need to be traded. How many times yeah, have a we lot. seen that? Yeah. So to be able to just be a professional, like that's like few and far between. And sometimes like, and I'm, I may be crazy for saying this. This is why some NBA teams are like, oh, you want to get traded? No, nah, we'll just cut you. And like, you won't have a job and guys end up losing their career. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I think part of that for me was like restoring the joy and perspective yeah. and honestly man like I'm, I'm not just saying this because i'm on your show but like g does an amazing job with maintaining perspective and having like as a friend do you mean no nah, just like, generally yeah. like yeah. having perspective having joy like it's so easy like I, I tell this to people someone asked me the other day what's like the most surprising thing about being an nba and one of my biggest takeaways has always been like just how miserable people are, despite the fact that everyone's living their dream. Like we yeah. all grew up, hey, I want to play in the NBA. I want basketball to be my job. Yet you get to January and this is bullshit. 70% man. 70 of the league is tripping about oh, my role, this, that, whatever, playing another game. Like, and I'm not exempt from that. I've, I've had moments where I'm like, oh, this is like a, this is a dog days or whatever. But like trying to, in many ways as you can, tap into like, wow, this is this is what we all wanted. This is what we all asked for. Playing in these moments, packed arenas, you know, having the the luxuries and, and opportunities afforded to you. Like, I just try to find as many ways as possible to like not take those for granted. Yeah, it seems like uh, in the NBA, like in all other areas of life, if you choose to be grateful for what you have, it's yeah. a lot easier of an experience. And despite having what on the outside seems like everything, right? As like an outsider, it's like NBA players ever have everything. And that's not always the case. But even despite those material things, there's still struggles and there's still people that are like, fuck this or whatever, you know? So it comes down, it comes down to mindset, it seems like. And that seems like what separates you guys. I mean, like at the end of the day, undrafted I mean, we're not pick. we're not supposed to be here like if you saw where but we you're here. where we have come from like <laughs> yeah. duncan is from newcastle new hampshire i'm from methuen massachusetts if you saw the gyms that we were working at google new market high school right that's where we were working out when what we years like, was i think like, it was hey, actually a joint middle school and high school i think it was like a joint gym. Yeah, on, anyway, honestly like if you saw the like and the way it broke down it was like we'd work out in the morning with like younger kids at like new market middle school and it was just like skills and drills what years is this when you're i mean I, I, I would say like high school yeah high school? high school and then it would turn into like then it'd be like do two out or an hour and a half there then midday it'd be like dover high school right with like kids are kids yeah. our age and then 
at night it would be at Berwick Academy and we'd play like pickup. And it was just like a constant summer from what I remember of just like snagging people, his buddy tell, my buddy, Her or our buddy, Harry. Like it, it just, Damn. all of it came into one where I was like, okay, George is going to Iowa State, Duncan's going to Williams. And then I've I've actually said this to him before when like our trainer was He like, used to be a hater for the record. And he was, on, used to be a hater this, for sure. I love well, because, it. because I was thinking about going to Iowa State, and she was like, "Yeah, we could take him as a walk-on, but like, no. he's not really, he's <laughs> not, not really like swear, that." Swear like, to God, no. he can give me water, he can give me towels, no. he can, you know, that's she makes not how it happened. Practice. That's so that's funny. All that's so, that's that is all so that we had. But I'll get back to where I was a hater, where like our trainer would be like, "Duncan's going to be like a ten-year NBA player," and. And this is when I was like, my ego was like thirsty yeah. for someone to be like, no, you're going to be. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Like, <laughs> man, this dude doesn't even go in division one, da, da, da. And sure as shit, you check up on him. He literally was rookie yeah. of the year, took his team to the N NCAA division three. Score 504. It's crazy how points. they change up, though. I remember when I, was, up. when I was changing from Williams to Michigan, he was like, hey, man, it's a lot different making shots in a packed gym. Let me tell you, you yeah. played play at these high school <laughs> gyms, man. In front of 700 people, it's a little different out here. Well, first off, uh, the, the it's the NESCAC, right? That's, yeah, NESCAC. NESCAC does it like, uh, <clears throat> look, I only know Division Three basketball, right? I, I haven't okay. been in high I haven't school been sports. Yeah. yeah, I haven't been around the higher levels. But I remember when you're used to a certain level of Division Three basketball, which is still really good college basketball, then you go see these NESCAC teams, and you're like, "Oh, these guys are monsters!" Like to us, sure, yeah. Because like, there a lot of those guys are like like you were. They're they're. Uh, Ivy League recruits that are like, am I going to go Ivy League or am oh, I going to go cracks. here? Yeah, yeah for and, random, re you know. Yeah. I got my, I had like a. Yeah, you were a fucking nerd. Yeah, yeah I, you know. <laughs> yeah, they're like, great schools too. A lot of them, like Williams, yeah. um, Hamilton. Yeah, really, I mean, really I, good I tell people all the time. I my first year, I wasn't the best player on our team. I was maybe the best like long term prospect. O'Connor Green. No, on our team. I was uh, I mean, Mike yeah, Mayer was the uh, best player. He was a, an All-American big guy. He was the best player on our team. Yeah. And Mike, shout out to you, dude. <laughs> Wherever you are, I know you're subscribed to the Benchy. <laughs> shout out to you, man. But, like, the, the talent was really high. Now, what you lack is, like, people that are on the rim, rim protection. Yeah. Like, there's no – you're not playing above the rim, but the skill level is high. And you're not really getting, like – Six ten, six eleven, seven feet. Yeah, big guys. Once six, in a while, six seven, six eight. Yeah, you might get a few but anomalies, but yeah. you know. So it was a huge adjustment. I I <laughs> sat out a whole year at Michigan, which really helped me like transition. Um, because that would have been that would have been a tough to go from playing one year in the NESCAC to then going to the Big Ten. That yeah. that would have been a challenge. But I had the year buffer in between, which, which then you really did your thing though. Do you ever go back to to Williams? What's it like? I mean, they claim you for sure. You were there for one year, and they claim you. They yeah. they need to chill with the claiming. You, <laughs> you did like the one. It's like the dudes that do the six month one and done. You, that was a pit stop. Yeah. It really wasn't a pit. It, it ended Hail up being to my, the <laughs> victors. It ended up being a pit stop, but it, there was no intention of it being a pit stop. Like I was, I was. You were there. Be there all four years, and I didn't actually leave until like two weeks before. I ended up on campus at Michigan because my our, my coach, coach left, left yeah. at Williams. So, I mean, I I loved my time in Williamstown. It would have been challenging to do four years there in hindsight, but that's also because I now have the perspective of what it was like to go to Michigan. You played was, fucking big time. Yeah, it was a blast. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like going to school at Michigan was an amazing experience. Like playing there obviously was a great experience. Ann Arbor is a special place. So. Yeah. So when you go back, when you call yourself an alumni or an alumnus, you are an alumnus of – the University of Michigan. Yeah, I mean, I technically didn't graduate from Williams. Like, I, I don't I actually have never heard anyone call me a, a Williams alum because okay, I'm not. Yeah, but yeah, they, yeah. you know, they, they didn't say, even pass a class. They rocks say, for jobs. <laughs> they say that you know, obviously, was a part of the program. Was at some point yeah. was academic. Duncan gave s uh, two months of his time to this program. <laughs> about <laughs> nine, I was there yeah. about nine months. Was the academics co comparable, or was it harder at uh, Williams? Williams, Williams grind, got it, man. Really? Because I mean, you just can't like. I, I always really tried to apply myself with, with like academically yeah. uh, at Michigan. Why are you laughing, bro? That's <laughs> let me just tell you this and we can let him answer it after. When you go to school yeah. to play a sport, the people that fail out, I'm like, you actually tried to fail. 
Because when you go to a school for sports, they do it. not want you to fail. <laughs> they will give you tutors. I mean, I give know G had hours. people doing his homework at Iowa State. Of that course. wasn't the case at Michigan, though. Like people had to do. I'll keep it a secret unless someone wants to give me some NIL money. <laughs> <laughs> so even at Michigan, you applied yourself. You were like, I tried oh, but, to. Yeah. I mean, I. I ended up getting two degrees from Michigan. So hey, they did. But I will say oh. this: Williams was different because the classes were so small, yeah. and they you would get like cold called on. So like if you didn't do the, the reading, work, the I reading, know. whatever, like you're looking like a dumbass in class. Okay, I, well, what about this in college? Like when you when you got to college and like yeah, you have syllabus week, which everybody knows is like you know just not really anything. And then they're like, okay, class, next week we're gonna have you. I want you to read like forty pages. And da -da. I'm like. <laughs> who who is reading 40 pages mind you like i was diagnosed with add when you know i was younger so yeah. reading like one page i'd like forget what happened on the oh, page dude, so dude. i'd have to read it like four times over so reading like 40 pages in college was like i was in a class that was like usually it was 300 people but this one was like 30 and i was like if you call on me i will murder you. i will honestly be very straight up honest with you and be like i don't know what's crazy to me about that though like i Obviously, I didn't do all the reading in college either. No, you did. Admit the, it. No. Admit it. The Tighten same, up your bow tie like, and you, say that you, you did. You could do the same thing. What I did get good at was like the banter of like contributing to a class, mm -hmm. like ask a question. You know what I mean? Like yeah. push back on somebody else's statement. Like uh. find a way to have your voice heard without like exposing the fact that you didn't do the reading. Dude, like you that, could do that same thing. Yeah. That I don't is know why you wouldn't. College is a game. I got my degree with less effort. Like apply yourself. What was Bro, your major? business marketing, which a lot of people try and say like, oh, it must have been communication because athletes get a bad rap. But I actually grinded, yeah. you know, to get my stuff done. Look, at the end my of the, tutors. I still say the hardest thing, the hardest thing I ever did was finish college. It was so hard for me. Where'd you go again? I went to like six different schools. <laughs> I went to um, Temple for three years. Oh, and yeah. I went to Bridgewater State because yeah. I tried to play basketball, but I got cut. <laughs> You fucking thing. <laughs> I was 21. And then I um, finished at a really good institution called Rutgers Camden, which was in, oh, in Camden, right New Jersey. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, yeah. Um, but I got my master's degree eventually. So that's Love pretty it. cool too. But yeah, I also have the ADD thing. So reading a page, what I got good at was very similar. I would yeah. pick a couple things. Like I would be like, all right, I know out of these 40 pages, this is going to be talked about. I pick like one point out of it. And then right when he's about to get to that point, oh, uh, blah, blah, he said that blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, or oh, he initiate like early on, get your work in early. early, say something early on, initiate the conversation. Yeah. Then it just, everything's, everybody's working off of you. And then someone be like, like Duncan said earlier, then your name yeah. gets called back. We're dropping sudden, knowledge. Like, you know what? Yeah. And that's awesome. I love that you did that. But uh, frankly, I don't think our viewers give a shit about what happened. <laughs> let's talk about Miami. No, no, let's talk. <laughs> yes, actually, let's talk about Miami. But I was going to say, people don't understand how cool the big house is at Michigan. You, you've been there no i never there? i've never been but like i've i've seen it on tv yeah. and i'm just asking we what gotta was, get you to a game what, man. what was the oh thanks you know what would be we the, should all go to a game what I would be the that. cool what would can i fucking I'm speak sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> um what would have uh what was the coolest game that you uh got to see while you were out there honestly we would we would, and where were your seats? Did they give you good seats or they were f screwing you guys? No, nah, we would like, we would come down on the field to start like with the recruits. Yeah. We would always have, we would always host recruits for football weekends, you know, cause that was like a big draw. So we would have like a recruiting tailgate and then we would like start on the field and then we would go. Do up. they serve glizzies there? Glizzies. Were you getting litty though? Were you like. No, nah, it was like a recruiting tailgate. So it was like all buttoned up. We actually yeah. never really got, there was like one weekend where we actually got to tailgate. Oh my. Like the football games, like really? a regular student. Other than that, it was all always like practice in the morning at like 8 a.m. on yeah. Saturday. And then we would do like a recruiting tailgate right after. And you like don't Coach drink. Coach B was like locked in. He didn't want guys like rolling into stuff, you know, looking all hungover. Yeah, hungover. So, um, Wait, but at the tailgate, you weren't getting hammered? Not at the recruiting ones. Dude, we used to get ripped, torched. Yeah. I mean, he he just basically, he would like Coach have B. a schedule so there was no way that we could. Like, could, yeah. Unless you were really trying to do like 6 a.m. before practice. But like who's really up? He's on that. Drink before, yeah. Are you on that? Before fight? practice? Yeah. What type no, of that, time are you crazy. on, G? Yeah, that's, that's uh, nice. Best game, though. I don't know. We By that point, we would usually stay for the first quarter and then leave. So, like, I remember the only game that I stayed the whole game for was the Michigan State block punt. So, I stayed that whole game and watched that final play just to, like, 
Did you go nuts? It, really? I mean, it was like, it was terrible. That was like a awful loss. Yeah. It's like raining out. Everyone's like walking, back. everyone's pissed off. That was And nobody goes out. That was the worst time because like I love lost, yeah. I, yeah. No one goes out. Right? I love Iowa State football, but when I was there, they weren't that great. And you'd be like, please just win so the bars would be packed. Yeah. I'll be I, honest. People just go home. Yeah. Michigan yeah. was a little different than that though because we would like, I'm not saying, Michigan's a football school, especially now, obviously. But hey, duh. When we were there though, like, <laughs> Michigan football was coming out of the gutter and yeah. we were still rolling. Yeah. So we felt like final it, four. Yeah. We felt like it was a basketball school <laughs> and shout out to Vogner. I don't, I don't want to say, I don't want to say that we were like wishing on the team to lose, but like <laughs> oh my, it, it there was, was like, a little rivalry. It, it was a win win. If we yeah. won, great. If we lost, it was like, all right, we're definitely a basketball school. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> like I told way, y'all basketball um, season, we ain't going to lose. We won't lose to these balls. Now that I'm just like an alum and have no ties to like on campus or anything, like the social dynamics, I'm like all in. You know, I'm like a big <laughs> so, Michigan football fan. I'm just thinking now, like you went, you're at the two biggest party destinations in your career. Mich U, U of M is like a huge party school. Miami is Not clearly- as much as you'd think though. Like in the Big Ten, like Penn State way bigger, Indiana way bigger, Michigan State Dude, Indiana- bigger. The drunkest I've ever been is in India. Yeah, uh, by far. You abuse alcohol, huh? <laughs> Certainly, we all B have town, abused. I, I've actually never been, but I've heard Bloomington is. Yeah, little. I mean, I've been little five, there, but I've never yeah. like gone out like little gone five out there, or anything yeah. like that. But I've heard Bloomington. But is it hard? Is it hard to stay? I mean, you're not a big clubber, you said, but like, is it hard to not be out on the scene like in Miami or? Oh, in Miami, no. Miami's honestly pretty easy in yeah. that like people see. Miami when they like go there for a weekend and they stay on South Beach and they do yeah. the whole like club thing like there's a whole different part of Miami that's not that that I'm like more tapped into and honestly yeah. like this guy's but, playing pickleball in the <laughs> word are you <laughs> or what's oh, yeah. what's that new yeah. Pa yeah I mean I honestly like especially starting out when I was just getting there I kind of viewed it as like a competitive advantage of like I know other people Come like coming in are going to get who like, was doing that whether it be like training camp or whatever like guys are going to be you know in the mix yeah. if i can just kind of like lock in i can create a little competitive advantage but like yeah. i say that to also say like i love living there and like i've had my fun in, in miami as well yeah. i just don't go like i'm not in in that scene you know, i mean crazy. miami's crazy. people go out yeah. there's a club where like the roof opens i've never been there but the roof opens as the sun comes up like, is that what you, where you go that's where you can find george <laughs> <laughs> i mean you that's only like deep house that's you, not really you, you, <laughs> you only get to play in miami sometimes once a year twice a year you get you know, twice Twice as yeah, you know, but I'm getting old, man. That's really not. <laughs> yeah, my yeah, anymore. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the one time I they invited me out to dinner. Did you hear this story? No. They invited me out to dinner. They came. They were in Brooklyn, right when we were starting to build a podcast. We went to dinner. Everybody slamming espresso martinis. This guy slamming. orders a Stella. Okay, I'm a little bit more like you. Tell and me, you tell me this is weird. Out by You're out to never. dinner. You're out to dinner. This is this, post game, right? This is post yeah. game. Yeah. So they're getting litty, but it's like in New York. Yeah. I mean, you got to come down after the game. You need a little pick me up for the yeah. night. I, I right. did one. I did yeah. one. But I'm not gonna have. Six he was like. He was like. Ooh. <laughs> multiple is a crazy move, I will say. Huh? Multiple is. I think I had like two, and then there. Nah, like, these dudes were shots, slamming them, bro. Couple of shots of tequila, tequila, and then we were rolling. It was. It was an. It was a night out, you know, in New yeah, York. What did that night look like? Um. You know, we actually, there was a place called the library where we like read and studied for our next <laughs> opponent. <laughs> we no, I mean, I think everybody has to realize like there is a lot of stress. And I think we talked about it, you know, in the NBA, yeah. you know, where there's a lot of expectations from yourself, from your team. And I don't care who you are. Anybody that says like, I don't care what the fans say. You, you always yeah. hear it. Like it, it eventually finds its way into your, mm -hmm. your brain. Yeah, of course. And. There are some cities where you're like, hey, this is a good city to, you know, Party. blow some steam off, relax, have some good fellowship, some team For camaraderie. Sure. And I think everybody's had that. Years seven, eight, seven, seven. Horizon, yeah. Is yeah. there a sneaky city that people, everyone knows Miami, fucking Toronto. New York. Toronto's a sneaky fun city. Sneaky fun city. Would you agree? Or do you have another one? No, Toronto's definitely. Toronto is great. I mean, Toronto. Toronto's no, just, on right. I love, New, I love New York, but I think of Toronto as like a clean New York. That's a little bit smaller, a yeah. little bit more manageable. I, I love New York, but yeah. I I think Toronto is great. Yeah, Tor Toronto. You made a face. You've had some time. Toronto is an awesome. Yeah, it's a great food I, scene. Yeah. Like I, li I like going to like food. a nice dinner. Yeah. That's like a little more my speed. What's your favorite restaurant in the country right now? 
in the country right like, now. Or like one How about that, this? Like, just give us your top five cities and best restaurant. In each one? In each city. Yeah. yeah, boom. We need that. Or how about just top three? Top, yeah, give me top three. Uh, well, I'll start in Miami. My favorite restaurant in Miami right now is Osaka. Osaka. It's like a Japanese Peruvian um, fusion. Yeah, a little fusion. Damn. Really good spot. They have like amazing sushi. Yeah. Um, Osaka is fantastic. Um, what about I'll New York? Say New York. Um, this is a little bit mainstream, but like Teresi is really good Italian. Yep. Uh, we went to a spot last night, Bar Pedi. I, I thought that was Bar really Pedi's great in West Village. Yeah, we spent a lot. Yeah. Of I mean, different vibes. Shout out to Bar Pedi. I'm coming back yeah. to get a long sleeve shirt because <laughs> you guys didn't have my size, and you know I couldn't be walking around New York with a small. One of my first dates ever was with my wife was at Bar Pedi. Wow. Yeah. Sounds like a special moment. And then we, it was very special. Yeah. And I met yeah, her at a bar cool. around the corner at, you, called you Blue Haven. I don't know that. if you saw that, which is right next to Carbone. So next it. time you go into Carbone, get an espresso martini at Blue Haven. That's where my wife. Okay. Next. Anyway, what's another another uh, another, another top three? Um, man, Chicago's fire. Chicago is great. I mean, when I'm in Chicago, I usually do like some sort of deep dish, like Blue. Yes, yeah, so lose, 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 definitely lose. Lose all day. Lose all day. That's my hometown. Sure. Um, yeah, man. I don't know, but like. Boston, I, there's some good food spots in Boston. Well, I like the North End in yeah. Boston. Yeah. Like you can find me at Aria. What's your favorite? Aria is your favorite in Boston? Um, I mean, I got to give a shout out to my guy, Nick Verano at Strega. You know, Strega, Strega always, spot. Always pop in over there, but yeah. G's a big Lola guy, Lola 42. Where's that? Is that in, North, in North End? Yeah. Yeah. I think they have one in, in Florida now too, maybe. Do they have one in Nantucket? In Nantucket. They <laughs> Nantucket. Shout out to Nantucket. <laughs> Nantucket. This guy's a vineyard guy, but Nantucket G's is. He's a regular on the island. Nantucket, <laughs> yeah, man. So, um, yeah, what about is there like a southern place? Like, like, what about the southern cities? There's nothing cool going on down there. Memphis has an amazing wing spot. I will say that. Oh, yeah. Memphis. Oh, wing Guru or whatever. No, it's like, I don't even know. Somebody orders in our team every time. They yes, bam. There's, a guy, there's a guy in the locker yes. room, though, that like, and they have these, he's like, jacked, yeah, has tattoos. Almost, I got her, yeah, yeah. and he was like, yeah, You want the wings? Like, uh, uh. they're crazy. Yeah. They're like, a, it's like a honey, it's like a hot honey, honey glaze. Something. Yeah. Yes, it's crazy. Yeah. Make you yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, lick the fingers for sure. Okay, so we had Ronnie Deutsch, aka um, you have Ronnie Tom Deutsch. Deutsch. Yeah, you know him too, oh, right? Tom you came up with him. Did you hoop with him? A uh, thousand percent. Men's league's legend. Ron Wait, legend, did dude. you not see that he he threw a lob to himself, had Duncan's jersey on, and took the it drunk off and dunk. then dunk it? Yeah, yeah, he, he was swimming. wearing my jersey with All the right. drunk dunk. So now, obviously, I have a I have a twenty seal, but let me get your your thoughts on this. Sure, one on one with Deutsch. You got to chug a beer every time you make a ba a basket. So it's like make it, take it. Yeah. But the second you make it, you got to finish the beer before you can check. Oh, uh, Duncan. Nope. Duncan would last like five uh, beers. Do you, you think you guys could? No, uh, yeah, like him against you guys. Oh. Do you think? Because like you, you're going to like, and if you puke, game I over. can't. I, this is going to sound <laughs> soft. I really can't drink beer like that. Yeah. So that's like a real uphill battle for me. Yeah, that'd be Whereas tough like one. I've talked to. <laughs> let's call him Ronnie. His name's Tommy, actually. Yeah. Not to expose his identity. Yeah. But I've talked to Tommy. Like, he doesn't feel beers until like 25. It's yeah. crazy. So he could really get to like 18. Like, if we're playing a 21, like he could Stop. realistically like still be somewhat sober. I, you guys I don't be hammered. I have like a capacity of like I don't know, nine beers. Nine. Like, I don't yeah. think I can go past. especially like I just don't around. drink beer like that. Yeah. So I mean, if you're saying who would win in that game. <laughs> Yeah, probably Ronnie Deutsch. <laughs> yeah, probably. Unless I can just like pull trigger. When my like knee gets back, ball. I want to play him that because I think I, I I can drink with him. He's probably a little bit better basketball player than me. But he, I he's a way better basketball. player. He's a player good player. You. He was. And a, you're he done. Was, hey, by the way, Kevin uh, was walking off a curb and messed up his knee, so his basketball career is probably it's not over. It's a minor setback. It's a major comeback. You feel me? I like always think about how much of just a massive inconvenience a major injury would be for like everyday life. It's like, obviously you, as an athlete, you you're like stay at home dad. I, <laughs> First of all, I'm not a stay at home dad. I have a job. It's this called making worldwide. internet videos. Yeah, yeah dude. Worldwide. Grill guy. I can't tell you how much of an inconvenience it is, Duncan. I it couldn't is even the, imagine. Like, I mean, you haven't gotten surgery yet, right? No. And my wife cannot stand the look at me right yeah, now. Yeah, she's probably pissed. Yeah, just. She doesn't think you. That's a selfish move. She doesn't think you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's like the worst though. You get an injury like that, you would think that you're gonna get like empty, no. pity, like, and you're actually you're at a point in your life where you're actually getting the opposite. I'm getting the opposite. You're getting crushed, like you're a dumbass. I was coming up the stairs with iced coffee this morning. 
my crutch just slipped. Crutching it. I dumped iced coffee oh on our my stairs. Gosh. There wasn't even a like. Yeah, it was no just remorse. a full and like, yeah. Jesus Christ. And then she was like, I'll clean it up. And it's like, then I have to be like, no, I'll do it. And what am I going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to tear yeah. another ACL. Trying to get worse. Up. Yeah. Yeah. I so feel bad, things, are going, things are going well in my house. <laughs> I mean, the things we do, love of the game, man. Yeah, you did it while hooping. It's, it is what it is. Got to live with that result at yeah. that point. Well, since you don't drink beer, he, Ronnie, Tommy did a, a Mount Rushmore of who he'd want to drink a beer with. And out of anybody in the world, who would you want to take a, a Mount Rushmore of taking a shot of tequila with? You want a Mount Rushmore? You yeah, want four. Oh, dead or alive? You, yeah, dead or alive. You, you can put me up there so you only have to pick three. Cause, right, I'll take G. <laughs> G can be first. Yeah. Um, goodness gracious. I would say uh, the other three. I'm trying to stay away from like, you got like a favorite actor or something? I got you, I got you, I got you. Yeah. I would say I'm big in golf right now, so I would love to take a shot at Tequila with Tiger and get some like swing tips. I think that's a great <laughs> one. That's a, um, yeah. I would say... That uh, could get dangerous after a couple of strokes. <laughs> but it's funny, it's not John Daly. That's yeah. two. Um, I mean, the greatest shooter on the planet, Steph Curry. Tough. I mean, he's he's in the bourbon game. Yeah. Uh, shout out Gentleman's Cup bourbon. So I so a shot of bourbon with Steph. Yeah. Did you really? I mean, I would, I'm saying. Oh. That would be three. I was, if he did a shot with you, I'd be like, Steph, that's kind of messed up. <laughs> it, that's uh, a plug. You think Steph will listen to this? I, I hope so. Uh, <laughs> what was that? Two, it was a fucking diss. <laughs> you said one of you said you got two thousand listeners. Like maybe he's in there. I don't. Know. Maybe that goes teammates. viral. He had a big summer. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number four, I gotta go. Somebody dead to round it out. Yeah. Um. Goodness gracious, I would say, I'll say. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> I was just about to say Abraham Lincoln. He's like, so can we uh, discuss the Emancipation Proclamation? <laughs> you know, just, I wonder if you even just a little what historical, yeah. historical reference. Just yeah. really kind of get his perspective on what he kind of envisioned at that point, and Dude. to be able to compare that with where we're at today. You know, I think that would be which is in a great place. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you ask, uh, yes, but yeah, yeah. You know, just it get a little perspective. Yes. That's kind be, of a lame ass four, but I mean, you're up there, so that helps. Yeah, yeah. No, you're saving I, the experience. It'd probably be like. If I was, were to do it, it'd probably be like you, Vince Vaughn, Will Ferrell. <laughs> I don't know. Who else? Me? No. I, we've taken one. We've drank once together ever. We've been friends only for was like a year. Was that the beer and espresso martini night? That one night. Yeah. That's the only time? He, only got night a, drink. he got a Stella and I was like, this really ain't my kind of guy. So, <laughs> you know, if you can drink an espresso martini with uh, a little bit of Bailey's and uh, tequila in it. That's wild to drink. Me. That's wild to me. But whatever, I'll do it next time with you guys. But anyway, Duncan, we really appreciate you coming on the Bench oh, we're Podcast. It up. I love it. Yeah. It's uh it's been a pleasure. Yeah, we don't have any more questions for and you. And congrats today. on not only the uh success to this point, but the continued success. Yeah. I appreciate it. You that. got uh big fans over here. We also another person we all share. We keep bringing this guy up on our podcast, Brian Hurley. I wonder how we'd rank us as shooters. Probably it's a fair question. Yeah, yeah. We're talking men's league shooters because it's a different type of game, mm -hmm. kind of like the flag football guy who thinks he's better than Patrick Mahomes. You're Ma one. Maybe I'm one. G's two. <laughs> I beat Duncan today in a shooting competition. You All did? right. Thanks, guys, for joining us. <laughs> Do that. All right. Thank you, guys, for joining us. Until next time. <laughs>